Hey dudes, do the Builder here, and in this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to be taking a look at how you can use the build system to perform what's known as conditional compilation. So you can make decisions about what code you're going to actually be compiling at build time. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at how to do this with uh, a command line option to the build uh, process and also how to uh, propagate this command line option to the actual execution of your program okay so um, it's a couple of features that we're going to be uh, taking a look at in this episode of zig and death so let's get started what we have here um, is the actual build.zig file and um, I removed the comments from the default build.zig that you obtain by running zig init exe. Um, just to make this uh, code a little clearer. Uh, but basically what we're doing here is establishing here the target and the optimization options. Um, these uh, two methods on the build uh, object here, which is in, in the variable b. Um, basically establish uh, a mechanism uh, via which you can specify uh, the build target um, in the case of uh, for example cross compilation um, and the optimization uh, or the build mode as we saw in the episode where we talked about build modes uh, release uh, release safe release small release fast okay well, these two method calls basically uh, add the functionality to zig build, so you can specify those options on the command line. Okay, and this is basically uh, standard um, the, with the with the code that's generated when you run zig init exe or zig init uh, lib. Okay. And um, next, what we're going to be seeing is uh, the actual code that we're going to be using to add a command line option to our uh, build process. Okay. And this is done in this line right here where we use this option method on the build object. And uh, this method takes the type of option. In this case, it's a Boolean. So it's basically a flag on or off. The name of the option of that flag that we're going to be using on the command line it's going to be here loop and we have a description for that option here with which uh, basically is telling us that if this flag is true if it's set on the command line um, we're going to be using a non-recursive Fibonacci function and we're going to be taking a look at that code in a little while but basically, as we see here in the comment, we specify this flag with the dash D uh, uh, flag uh, in zig build. So for example, in this case, you would pass dash D loop, and that would set this to true, okay? And here, um, the result of this uh, method call is an optional, and we're using then or else to establish a default value of false, okay? If this optional is null, this means that the flag wasn't passed at, in the command line. And with or else, we're just then setting it to false. Next, what we're going to do is basically use uh, that option to make a decision here at build time. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, define this constant here called uh, fib file. It's going to be a string, a slice of const u8. And we're using our option here, uh, our use loop, which we obtained uh, in, in, in this line right here. And uh, if it's true, we're going to be using uh, this source file, fibloop.zig. And otherwise, if it's false, we're going to be using this source file, fibrecurse.zig. Uh, okay. And here is the actual... Uh, definition of the module that we're going to be uh, providing for our program to use. Um, this uh, method called add module will define a module and we're giving it the name Fibonacci and we're telling it that the source file is going to be uh, precisely this uh, constant that we defined uh, which is called fib file. 
So you know, in essence, what we're doing is we're defining a command line option called loop. And depending on that option, we're going to be either compiling the fib loop.zig file or the fib recurse.zig file. Okay, so basically, this is the, the conditional compilation part of this example. Okay, now here we have uh, 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 the example of how we can propagate that option um, to our executing program. Okay. Here, we're just using the option during build time, okay? But here, we want to make that option also available to our executing program. So what we do is we use this, uh, this add options method on the build object, which will return an options object. And on that options object, we can add an option as we're doing here. We're once again telling which type of, of, of option it is. This is a Boolean. We're calling it use loop. And we're assigning it the value of use loop, which we uh, obtained uh, over here, okay, from the build command line. So basically, we are transferring here uh, a build command line option, uh, the result of that uh, evaluation to the executing program. And uh, we're going to basically add this to our executable here with the add options method of the exe uh, object and we're calling this config this is basically going to be the module that's going to be exported to our executable which we can then import in our in our program okay this is the name that we can use in the import um, call and we're passing in that options object that we created over here okay and aside from that, we are also uh, defining the module that we can import in our program for the Fibonacci function. We're calling it Fibonacci. So this is the name that we're going to be using in the import call in our program. And we are assigning it the module that we created above called Fibonacci. Okay. And finally, we have the line here to install the artifact, which will actually generate the binary file for our executable program. Okay. Now let's uh, take a look at those uh, Fibonacci function files. We have in one file, this is the fibrecurse.zig, and this basically defines a fib function that takes a u size and returns a u size. And what it'll do, it'll use the recursive method of uh, calculating that nth Fibonacci number. We have here the base case, which is important in any type of recursion to have a base case so, so we don't go into an infinite recursion. And uh, here, in all other cases, we will recursively call the fib function uh, with n minus 1 plus the fib function n minus 2. Okay? And now, in our iterative uh, version, uh, the one that uses a loop, what we basically do, we once again have the base case here. We define these three variables, A and B, are for the actual Fibonacci calculation. I is going to be to, uh, to, for our loop, for our while loop iteration count. And here, basically, while I is less than N, what we're going to be doing is we're going to create this temp variable holding the value of A. We're going to set A to B, and we're going to set B to uh the temp plus b okay and when we finish uh, this loop we return the value of a okay so this is basically a simple implementation of uh the fibonacci function using a loop uh, versus the recursive version which we have here okay and um now we can take a look at our main.zig file and here, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import that config module that we exported and made, made available in our build.zig. This config module basically has that variable that we are passing in when we're building that loop uh, flag. Okay. And uh, here we are uh, effectively importing that fib function from the Fibonacci module. And this Fibonacci module is either going to be the compilation of the recursive Fibonacci function or 
the iterative Fibonacci function depending on that flag that we pass in the, uh, to the SIG build command. Okay. Um, here we're going to have an example also of passing command line arguments to the actual executable program. Um, this is different from the the loop uh, uh, command line uh, flag that we uh, provided to the build system. Um, this these command line arguments are for the actual executable program, and we're going to see an example of using those um, by providing the double dash uh, syntax. Uh, this tells uh, our zig build uh, run command that af anything after these two dashes are going to be arguments that have to be passed to the actual executable program itself. If we go here to our build.zig, we're going to see um, uh, uh, an instance here where we test if the, the actual build program uh, uh, command line has arguments here we're testing if b.args we capture those arguments and we pass them on to our run CMD here which is the actual build step to run the executable okay so this is where we are passing on those uh, command line arguments after the two dashes to the actual executing program okay and then here in our in our main.zig we can use start process args to obtain an iterator over those arguments. Here we're ignoring the first call to next, which will return the actual uh, name of the program being executed, and we're not interested in that. And here we're going to be uh, trying to obtain the actual number that we're going to pass into our Fibonacci function. And what we're going to do is we're going to call once again that next method of the iterator and if the next method uh, produces an, an argument then we try to parse it because arguments are always strings we have to try to parse it as an integer and we're going to try to convert it to a u size uh, of base 10 okay or if we don't have an argument then uh, this next uh, call will return null and the else of this if is going to be uh, executed and what we do is provide a default value of 7, okay? So this is a little simple way um, to uh, obtain uh, the command line arguments via the iterator provided by stud process args, okay? Now, once we have that, we are going to also uh, make use of that uh, command line option that we passed in to build. And uh, we have it here in the config module that we imported as the use loop variable. Okay, this is going to be a Boolean. And depending on uh, whether we used that loop flag at build time, we're going to be setting this string to loop or uh, recursive. Okay. And finally, we uh, print out the output from actually making the fib call. We're making it right here. And we're also printing out that uh, uh, string that we're defining here based on the config variable and the actual uh, number that we're going to be using uh, for that Fibonacci call. Okay, so if we go here to our uh, uh, command line and we do a zig build run and we're going to be using the dash summary all. And here we didn't provide any build flag or any uh, runtime parameter arguments uh, for our program. So what do we have? That the default value of seven was uh, used, and we have that we are using the recursive uh, version of the Fibonacci function. Okay. Now let's clear the screen, and let's use our dash d loop. Uh, build time uh, option and now as you can see we are still using the default uh, uh, argument to the program um, the value 7 here but now we are indeed uh, seeing the effect of using this uh, dash d loop option we are now using the loop version of the Fibonacci function okay you can see here 
um, it's telling us that we're using a cache version because we haven't seen any changes to the source code for that um, let's clear the screen once again and now we'll use the double dash uh, syntax to pass a, a, a command line argument to our actual executable program so let's say that we want to see the ninth Fibonacci number we pass in nine and uh, here we go it now says that this is the ninth Fibonacci number which is 34 okay we're using once again the loop uh, version here let's uh, clear the screen let's do that once again but let's remove the build time option here and uh, there you go the ninth Fibonacci once again 34 but this time using the recursive uh, uh, function okay and um, let's go back here to our code let's say that here let's make a, a little temporary change let's add one here okay now let's clear the screen we're not using that version okay as you can see it's still using the cached uh, compiled artifact because we didn't make any change to the recursive version but if we once again use dash d loop now we can see that instead of cast it says success here because it actually had to rebuild uh, the loop version and we're seeing here a different number okay so we're actually seeing the change that we made let's undo that and save it clear the screen use this once more and now once again it's rebuilt and we have once again the correct 34 okay and if we run that again now we see that we're using the cached version okay so basically with that uh, you have an example of how to uh, using the build system you can set an option for the build process uh, at the command line that the user can uh, pass in using the dash D uh, switch and you can also propagate that option um, aside from making uh, build time decisions like we're doing here you can propagate that to runtime also by making it available as a module that you can import in your program okay as we see uh, down here so I hope you find this uh, useful um, the build system in Zig is in, in under active, active and heavy development right now so uh, we will be seeing more features and uh, more changes to this functionality but as of uh, this version 0.11 it already is a really really powerful uh, build system and uh, allows you to do a whole lot of things like like you saw in this uh, episode so do the builder here I'll see you in the next one